Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about IP addresses, how to store them in your Microsoft Access database, preventing duplicates, but also allowing you to sort them numerically instead of alphanumerically. Today's question comes from Dan in Sacramento, California, one of my gold members. Dan says, I need to have a list of IP addresses that is searchable. I can't have duplicate values. If I split the IP address into four separate fields, then I can't use index no duplicates. If I enter the full IP address as a text field, then the sort is wrong. Dot 100 comes before dot two. What is the best way to accomplish this? Well, Dan, there are two ways we can go about this. We can either store each component in a separate field, IP1, IP2, IP3, IP4, and then put them together, or we can store it as a single text field and break it up when we wanna do things like sort on it. I'm gonna show you both ways. We'll do the first method in this video, and then in the extended cut for the members, I'll show you the other method. Both work just fine. It all depends on how you want to enter the data and store it in your tables. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to, but for this example, we really don't need it. I'm just using it because I have it built. But let's say for each of my customers, I'm gonna go into design view, I wanna store their IP address. And obviously you're gonna use this for users on your network and what their IP addresses are or whatever, but we're just gonna put it in this field. So I'm gonna store this as four separate fields. This is the first way we're gonna do it. We're gonna call it IP1, and that'll be a number, all right? IP2, number, IP3, number, and IP4, those are the four different parts. Now, if you wanna come down here and put uh, you know, validation rule, all right, it would have to be between zero and 255. All right, and put validation text down there if you want to. All right, and then you can just copy that to these. Okay. Now, you can't index each of these guys individually, but you can index all four of them together in what's called a composite key. I've got a whole separate video on composite keys. Here it is, go watch that. You'll find it on my website. You'll find it on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on, but I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. All right, so we're gonna come up here and click on indexes. This is a list of all the indexes that are already in the table, right? Customer ID email is a primary key. We're gonna create our own named index right here. I'll call it the IP address. And then you put here in this column, the names of the fields that you want. So IP1, IP2, IP3, IP4. Yeah, I don't really care for the way Microsoft does this, but everything under that, as long as this is blank, that's all part of the same index. It's weird, I know, but you get used to it. Now the properties are right here in the name field. Now, it's not a primary key, but we do want it to be unique, so change that to yes. Okay, there's unique there, yes and no. All right. What that means is the combination of these four fields has to be unique. Okay, so close that, save it. All right, data integrity rules gotta be checked. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Okay, existing violation, violence rules. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. It was just yelling because I put a validation rule on here and these guys here, okay, there's no values in them. That's okay. All right, let's go into here. Now, here's my IP addresses, all right? If I go 1111, yeah, I'm not using valid IP addresses, I know. All right, now if I go 1111 again, it yells at me, okay? But if I go 1112, it comes out fine, okay? 1121, 1110, whatever, okay? Now, the problem you were having is if you have um, 1112, 100 and then 1112. Yep, I already got that in there. All right, 22. Okay, if you sort that as a text field, it's going to get sorted alphanumerically. And you're right, 100 will come before 2. But now, if I bring this into a query, I can sort it based on these fields in order. And you can also bring these together so that you can have the, you know, the normal IP address the way you like to see it. So, We'll create a query, query design. 
bring in the customer table and then bring in the IP addresses. One, two, three, four. I'm going to set this to uh, is not null so we don't get blank ones. Okay. We can sort these now ascending. Okay. And we can put them all together over here. What is it? What's this going to look like? Well, IP, the full IP address is going to be IP one and a period. Oh, no, not a comma, a period. I said period <laughs> and IP two and a period and IP three and guess what? A period and IP four. All right. Little string concatenation there for you. All right. And if I run this now, there you go. And you can see these are sorted properly in numerical order, if that's what you want. Okay, so you can put that IP together using a calculated query field, and it will sort in the right way. Now, the only problem with this method usually is it's a pain to enter in an IP address like this in four separate fields. So personally, I would go the other way. I would have the user enter the IP address like that in a text field. And then we can use the split function to split these guys off. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. So in the extended cut for the members, what we're going to do is we're going to store the IP address in a short text field. It's easier to type in. It's easier to search on. It's easier to edit, right? Than, than having four separate fields. Then we'll use the split function to break that up into its component parts. Then once we have those separated in a query, we can then sort numerically based on those to get your sorting value. As a reminder, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases and have access to the code vault. So join today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. 
Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.